You mentioned the Stay Neighborly program, which allows uh, cities to have an avenue to report bad actors. Does that program, I mean, can people be removed for not, for listing their property without a license through that? I don't know if I understand the question, I'm sorry. I, can, do you remove people who are listing their properties without a license through the uh, stay neighborly program, or is it strictly for people who are yeah. having loud parties? Yeah, it was a, it, the program is built around being a nuisance related program. So basically, what it does is it, it, it's focused on occupancy. It's actually uh, written up on the website as I think it specifically speaks to occupancy, parking, noise, and trash. But uh, nuisance related laws for good neighbor programs. More than anything, I think what the uh, uh, goal of the program is to be able to educate the property owners and managers about local regulations less uh, worried about uh, having to do anything reactive to anybody who might be acting appropriately, however that is uh, part of the program. Why don't you make uh, compliance with l licensing regulations and, per and permitting part of the same program if the infrastructure is sort of already there to remove bad actors who are violating um, regulations with regard to parking or noise? Why not remove the ones who are violating uh, regulations re related to having a permit to do what they're doing? Do you refer to that? Um, the, uh, we've, we've rolled this out in other cities. Uh, I haven't had that question. Um, I'm sure, though, we, we do have programs in place. So if the city does put a regulation in place regarding registration, then there, there are certainly communications that have with the city regarding regulation about registration about what registered properties that we would be working with on this action. And one of, the, one of those uh, issues that we are pushing for in the city is pushing for is once we have a permit, a registration permit number, that the city will maintain a public database. They will also convey that information to the platforms. And again, it's communication between the city and the platform that, and that exist at that point. Um, red light cameras are contra controversial, but they're not removing all the controversial all the red light cameras. So they work out the regulations. So I think Matt Hudson and the platforms, is once the city and, and the platforms come up with the set regulatory framework, different from our framework, from their framework, there's going to be full compliance. The city is really working, and our platforms are truly working with, with the city here to make this uh, the, the, the model of the, the nation's best for compliance and regulation. I think one of the important things to remember too is that you know while uh, there are advertising platforms that are out there, we probably represent a, a wide variety of the folks who are engaged in short-term rental activity. There certainly are a lot of smaller listing sites that are coming uh, up, up all the time, and some that have existed for a long time, or other ways to advertise a short-term rental. So while we're trying to set the standard as a company for educating, promoting, and promoting good behavior and good actors within short-term rental. the other sites to do the same and some of them are already have started, but there's a whole lot of uh, different internet websites out there for people to advertise on, people advertising back in the newspaper, people advertising on Facebook, uh, so there are different ways people advertise on social media. Yeah. You know, so part of the challenge is uh, the listings that are being listed advertised for short-term use. So part of the challenge for us is, number one, when we went through the data, we saw a lot of people are renting for longer than 30 days, days. So there's no reason to register with the city because they're not actually renting for what the city would consider a short-term use. I only rented the property I actually own for 30 days plus, just frankly, because I just wasn't able to be as engaged with the property as I would have liked to have been if I were in for a short period of time. Number two is, are they actually renting or not? So because so many of the sites, including ours, doesn't actually act as the pathway or the party for the, to the transaction, the transaction doesn't actually occur through our site. We, at the end of the day, don't always know if a transaction ever occurs, if the rent ever happens. Just to be able to explain that to you guys a little bit better, when my wife and I went for our honeymoon last year, we rented property. We got connected through our site, through HomeAway. We connected to that property owner. We rearranged our start date and our end date about 15 times before we actually finally stayed there. So HomeAway never knew what the actual length of stay was. 
frankly, we could have also just simply canceled our stay, and homeowner would never have known. And that's just our side. Plenty of the other sides are also advertising based. So uh, that's one of the challenges is do we even have the data to be able to share? I think what we try to do is we try to educate the city on what we do and what we don't have, what we're able to do and what we're not able to do. Uh, and moreover, the best thing is we're able to try to achieve compliance by educating the property owners and managers and uh, encouraging them to uh, get registered with the city, following up with them, encouraging them to post their registration number and all the things that are gaining compliance, which is the ultimate. So maybe a better way to ask the question is, let's just say that the, the regulation on the table right now is approved. What is HomeAway going to do to facilitate the city's ability to enforce that realistically, given the inability of the city to hire an unlimited number of people to do an onerous investigation into having proof that will stand up in court as to who is renting short term because that's always been the sticking point. These units aren't listed by address, their owners are unknown. So each demonstrating that each one of these units is in fact being lit, rented short term is actually like a very involved process and when you're talking about thousands of these in the city, it's hard to see how the city could manage that and it, I mean the history says that they haven't managed it. So what is HomeAway willing to do to make that, make any regulation reasonably enforceable? Where it's successful? Yeah. Yeah, right. number one, we're here. And then I think communicating very closely with the city, working very closely with the affected city. I mean, specifically regarding the issue of, of data and or limiting the ability of unpermitted people to list on HomeAway. Like if people don't have a permit to rent for less than 30 days, I'm not a computer science major, but it seems like there would be some switch on your websites that you could do to say like you can't advertise for less than 30 days if you don't have a permit number. I mean, it, that's what I'm talking about. Like specifically when the rubber meets the road, what can HomeAway do or not do to make the city make it easier for the city to identify people who are renting their property out without a permit. Um, we, it, I feel like I was trying to follow there as best I could. Boil it down one more time. So, what what is HomeAway willing to do to help the city, and and specifically, what is that is HomeAway willing to do to help the city identify? people who are renting out property short term without a proper permit? Well, yeah, I think, number one, we have to finish the policy. So the first place is we actually have to get to a place where we finish the policy and help the city understand how to build the policy to achieve compliance. Then, of course, we want to be able to educate all the property owners and managers to get registered, and we want to try to get registration uh, to be as compliant as possible, if, if we can, to achieve 100% compliance. We've achieved 100% compliance in other places where people will get registered with the program. So that's great, that's what we ultimately want, because that way the property owners and managers are following the rules, registered, paying taxes. But then if we get to a place where the policy says anything along the lines of you know, you have to list a registration number, and the, and platforms like ours need to be able to uh, uh, enforce the registration number, that's a conversation we're happy to have. And we're happy to have that talk with the city. Uh, but at the same time, uh, one of the things that becomes a challenge is, like you pointed out, there are people who are running for longer than 30 days a day. So we have to make sure that we have a lot for that too. Uh, so I think overall, uh, we're certainly willing to work with the city. We're certainly willing to list registration numbers. Now what we do right now to do that is we encourage people to put it in their advertising fields, for headlines or description uh, areas uh, describing the properties. Uh, and we'll continue to do that. And if there gets to be a point where the city wants to make sure that everybody who's renting short term has a registration number, then we can sort of work with the city.